Congratulations on your uh, fantastic success so far. Looking at the 2016 standings, in second place in the Pro Master Series, a fantastic start to the season. Well, it could have been better. It could have won. But, yeah, um, one of that. You, you, can't, you can't always win. Uh, the car was great. I had a bit of an incident in the, the second race. I got you know, a bit cramped in the first corner and clipped the tyres. So when I say cramped, I was level pegging with uh, Greg Ritter, who, who's actually leading the series, and he won the round. And uh, there was, it was either hit him or hit the tyres. So I, hit, I chose the tyres. It bent the steering, but uh, it's such a well-built little car. It ended up with you know more toe out on the front than uh, is obviously what it needs, but it still kept going, and I still came second in the race. So you know it's a great little. It is a fantastic little car, really. It's a credit to the guys up there, the uh, for well, the guys and girls at um, Bendigo Retro Muscle Cars, Gary O'Brien and his mate, and uh, Lyndon Little does the engine. He's he's uh, doing a new engine for us now, which I'm hoping will try and offset that. Monza, which um, Greg Ridders is driving. Greg Ridders is an ex, you know, V8 Supercar driver, so mm-hmm. very, very high standard driver. And the Monza's got a 350 Chevy in it, so obviously the grunt department is is very strong, and the Tirana's better around the corners, but the, the Monza's quicker in the straight. So you know, that's like racing used to be. Not everybody's even. The strengths and weaknesses, and I think that's what people like about the Touring Cup Masters is there's a bit of like elastic band that keeps the cars together, but it's not always follow the leader like V8 Supercar. This early in the season, do you start to look at things and you go, okay, uh, this is going well, but I think there's room for improvement on the suspension side of things? No, not really. I mean, the car's very good. It is very good and we understand it better as we go along. We can generally, between us, dial it into any given track. It's the first time it was on a street circuit at at, uh, Clipsal and, uh, you know, we managed to get it into a pretty good spot. If you you watch any of the footage of it, it's it's a very well-behaved car. You know, certainly in the the engine, it's it's, we're still running a Holden engine where all the other Toronas have got Chevs in them and they allow Chevs because it's easier to build a Chev <laughs> I mean you can you can buy all the bits where a Holden you've got to get them made specially Holden V8s have been out of production for a long long time so but the guys up there the Bendigo boys are very old can I use the word Holden tragic so <laughs> they do so, love it <laughs> uh, you know I, I, I go along with it it's a, it's a lovely engine it just gives a bit of way in a straight line that's all it's beautiful to drive very very linear and its power deliveries, which which is good because it makes the driver's job easier. But in terms of just outright top speed, it's it's uh, down a bit. So that's what we're hoping to achieve with this next engine. But it is, it's still going to be a Holden engine. So we're kind of a bit patriotic. I mean, I, I'm not patriotic, but I'm becoming patriotic. You're getting there. They are. <laughs> <laughs> JB, your next round coming up in Sandown at the start of next month. Uh, 18 days in counting. Is there anything that uh, you, you're focusing on in those 18 days that you, you sit there and go, OK, oh, no, I might have to do this a little bit different come Sandown? No, well, Sandown's two drag strips and a, and a couple of wiggles, so, <laughs> you know, it's, it's probably not going to play into our hands overly well because of the, the drag strip factor, but, uh, you know, the, the, the engine's supposed to be ready by then, so hopefully that'll put us on a better a better thing, but, I mean, any series is a series. It's uh, it's race after race after race. Yep. The Sandown meeting is, is one of the few we don't race for V8 supercars. It's good in a way because you're the star of the show or, you know, the uh, the category is the star of the show, but you know you don't race in front of as many people. The yeah. one thing about racing in V8 supercars is that there's lots of people there, and you know you get lots of television and all that sort of thing. But the bad thing is if your, your race runs two minutes over time, they stop it. It's time certain because of the V8s and television. So quite often you get your race cut. So that's a bit of a nuisance. So I'm looking forward to. It. I've raced at Sandown. My first race at Sandown was 1979, mate. So wow! And what were you I'm, driving uh, back in '79? A Formula Two car. Wow, okay. An Elfin Formula 2 car. In fact, it was my it was only my second race outside Tasmania, and uh, I had a, I've still got the trophy. It was the Thompson Motor Auctions trophy, and I won the race. So I've got very good memories of Sandown in many ways. I've got a few bad ones. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let's just brush past those, JB. Seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You only concentrate on the good stuff. Exactly. Well, we're looking forward to uh, to seeing this car out on the track again uh, when it hits Sandown next month. Cannot wait. And and good luck, as you said. Look, a lot of straights in Sandown. The drag strips make it a little bit difficult against those Chev's blocks, but uh, it is early in the, oh, in the series. Oh, there's other guys in it too, mate. This guy, the, like Eddie Abelnika is, uh, is a guy uh, who's been around for quite a long time, and his car's improved out of sight. He's got a guy looking after it now called Scotty Owen who's really made the car 
good and it's got a 351 Clevo in it, so it's very strong. Ben Seaton's car now is, Scotty Owen's also doing that car, looking after it, and that's taken an upwards turn. I mean, Glenn snatched pole away from me at, at Clipsal by six one hundredths of a second, so that's more than competitive. I said to him, I've been fighting him for 15 years, I'm still fighting him. 20 years, probably. It's the same with Jim Richards, you know, they, they, those guys are very good operators and they're Greg Ritter's in it. It's good, it's good to race against good people, you know. Like, uh, it's, winning's not everything, but if you do your best and, you, and you've got a good little team of people around you, you go home at the end of the weekend and you can be fully satisfied. Also helpful than when you have a really enjoyable car to drive. Yes, it does. It's, uh, I mean, I always try and make sure I've got a good car to drive because that makes you look better. <laughs> John, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you, mate. Uh, good luck with the rest of the season, and it's fantastic to see that this uh, Bendigo-based car and built car is is going strong on the track, like oh, you mate, said. Oh, it's, mate, it's, it's fantastic. They, they are very, very clever people, like us, very much unsung heroes of the motor racing world, so uh, I'm, I'm delighted to be involved with it, and uh, this, you know, the city of Bendigo is quite enthused about it too, which is nice.